What's up guys? Hey, it's JS here. I really didn't plan on doing this video today, but I decided to go ahead and throw something together because I ended up pulling together some good footage. You know, it's tidbits and samples. It's not a whole documentary and everything. But guys, listen, I kind of went into uh, Brian Zinn's uh, 1911 class, and it is a 101. What, what I liked about it today, and we just had a blast, is Brian... You know, we're going to go through drills. We're going to hammer through a lot of stuff tomorrow. He shoots, uh, you know, different targets and his philosophy. Obviously, you know, you guys need to know, uh, you know, get a look at some of this. This is a 1911 stuff. So if you're a Glock and you're going to get butt hurt, you may not, you may not <laughs> uh, want to care. Take this stuff light. Don't get bent out of shape. This is for 1911 aficionados. But basically, it's a history-driven class. We went through the history of the 1911. Brian takes us through a lot of stuff, through his eyes, his history. Obviously, 20 years, Marine Corps, national shooting team, 12-time champion. Uh, what? I'm not going to do it justice. Uh, let's see. What were my notes? Uh, seasons 2 and 5 of Top Shot. Brian Gunny's in. He was joined by Casey Crawford, who uh, makes his own custom 1911s. Master gunsmith. All I can tell you is do your own research. Here's the guy's card. People come to him all over the country for work. All right, let's get that to, to dial in and focus. But awesome. We went through the history of the 1911 complete history. Uh, started with the 45 ACP round. Different technology, smokeless powder. 1906, the Marines, the military. Browning, John Moses Browning, magazine fed. Kind of stuff you see on the History Channel, basically. How it was adopted by the Army in 1911, became officially known as the Model 11. U.S. Navy and Marine Corps adopted Browning design pistol in 1913. There's a splash of some of it. All right. Browning dies in 26. Military continues to adopt it. It go into World War II. There's the gunny. This guy is fantastic. I'm gonna splash a couple footage in there. It's not a lot, but you guys are gonna see him actually shoot. Gets adopted by Jeff Cooper, Jack Weaver, Ray Chapman. A lot of famous guys who are no longer with us. A lot of history if you're kind of an aficionado and you appreciate, you know, fine old world craftsmanship, things like that. This is a wonderful quote. Love that. And I saw heaven opened up and behold a white horse. And he that set upon him was called faithful and true and the righteousness he doth judge and make war. Revelations. 1911. This is kind of cool. Um, Casey Crawford. Look, you know, I have to... I don't claim to know a lot of people in the industry, but these are old school guys, man, and these guys are very relevant because we don't know about them on the YouTubes. Doesn't mean they're not doing great things. I come to have a newfound respect. I mean, KC, for example, member of the Pistol Smiths Guild. He's been on the Marine Corps. He was there. What did Gunny say? He basically said he was a former chief instructor at Quantico. Retired 22 uh, years of service, rifle team equipment repairman. I mean, these guys are dedicated supporting the teams. You have the shooters, and then you have all the repairmen. And he's a, he's a marksman in his own right. These guys did all the IPSC and through all those gyrations throughout the years of things. Anyway, I didn't do it justice, but man, if you want a barrel trig custom trigger job, I mean, just fantastic technical stuff. He pioneered this battle axe trigger kit. Uh, it's not necessarily the trigger, but it's, it's how the sear and the engagement and all this stuff interacts. I mean, you can, it's called the rolling trigger. Oh my God. If you want something like that, you need to call KC. Uh, but anyway, that's what we had on break time. They brought in barbecue. I mean, just fantastic. So anyway, let's get on to the footage. That was my attempt at the introduction. Enjoy yourselves. And guys, wait till you check out some of these guns. Casey does custom guns. He'll take any gun and everything. Trigger jobs. You basically get... I don't know how to explain it. He gets frames and things like that from 
whatever your budget or whatever your price range is. And then he starts doing custom armorer and gunsmithing work, uh, you know, over with 30 years of experience plus on that weapon. So if you, anything from trigger pull to lightness to deburring to taking, he took a guy's, I have no idea. One of the guys bought a 1911 from overseas. You couldn't get the barrel out of it on disassembly. Casey just looks at it and he could see how it was wearing out the edges. He looks at it like an engineer. He can fix it. He's, to me, it just looks broken and jacked up. Casey looks at it, figures it out, repairs it, comes back, files it down, smiths it. I mean, it was amazing. He was fixing stuff left and right. Uh, if I got problems with 1911, I know who I'm going to. And guys, and I said it in the class, it's much different from uh, with Glocks. You know, our plastic fantastic. We just go up, we buy new triggers, we drop them in, call it a day. But the 1911, for uh, true craftsmanship, it's really neat to finally make connections and inroads and identify people that can help you out. And hey, come on, man, like you guys, we all start with one gun and we know that never leads to anything. It's important, it's cool, it's important as you kind of start collecting, appreciating more and more, you end up going, uh, your collection expands. So my philosophy, guys, everybody needs a good 1911. All right, you can figure out and be the judge if you want to carry one or not, but there's nothing wrong with having one. So don't be a 1911 hater, guys. Appreciate the history in our past, all right? And uh, go out and make sure that you're getting good quality training. Anyway, enjoy the video. Back to the footage. Oh, and prob probably in the very end, you're probably, when I do a panorama of the, the guns, my guess is it's twenty to thirty thousand dollars in guns. So slow the video down, check it out, enjoy yourself as we hit the footage. Also, guys, how many Glocks does one need? You got twenty-two thousand Glocks. If you don't have a nineteen eleven, add one. Resets really long, he can change that. Where you gotta go, boom! It's like, like the Tupperware gun? Yeah. Mine, it's all short. It's right there. And that thing will just move a little bit. Boom, boom. Cool. Okay. Get a picture of this gun. What else? Oh. Random question, where did you guys get all those cool grips? I was trying to change my grips, I learned about BZ grips, I don't really like that. Not a fan of BZ, if you want some cool grips, Wicked Grips. Wicked and Strange make some great stuff. Yeah, and, and just search the internet. You can get just about anything. Sorry, I'm kicking myself for not having more footage, guys. Don't hold that against me. You know what, maybe I'll nail up a part two tomorrow. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and clean the Dan West, and it did pretty good. I do have a Cabot that I'm making layaway payments on. But, uh, you know, so far, so good. All right, uh, holster-wise. I bought this holster many, many years ago. Um, this is that leather line stuff. I don't really recommend them. Uh, it's basically like a strop. You think people, a lot of people have the false impression that a leather line Kydex holders, holster is good. 
Uh, lessons learned, man. It's actually like a strop, right? You know, a razor, every time you go against, what does it do? It sharpens that razor. So you get dirt, dust, debris down in there, and you're constantly, you know, putting your gun inside, in and out. That, that's basically, it's going to do the opposite of what you think. It's going to start to wear your finish. All right? I haven't shot this one enough to really do that. But I uh, just wanted to leave that parting tip. Of course, this is not Green Force Tactical, but a lot of guys like this Garrett Industries holster. Um, I like Green Force Tactical. I didn't get it in time. I got an order for a brand new 1911 holster and a couple uh, side mags. Anyway, that's the end of part one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully, I can put up uh, phase two. And we are out of here. <laughs>